Question 2 in the game, or question 19 overall in the section, asks, which one of the following is a complete and accurate list of the recycling centers in Rivertown, any one of which could recycle plastic? So again, this is a which one of these works type of question, so it's probably going to be easiest to go about this via process of elimination. Now we want to start with what we know for sure, rather than generating these hypothetical scenarios to say, oh, can we randomly figure out whether something works or not? So in this particular case, we can use what we've already done and see how far that gets us and then test what we have to test after that, rather than starting from a blank slate. For example, we figured out here that sensor 2 cannot recycle plastic. So we can get rid of all of the answer choices that have sensor 2 in them. So we can get rid of choice C, and we can get rid of choice E. But we're still stuck with three answer choices. So how do we think about how to narrow this down further? What you'll notice here, and what I wrote up here is a reminder, but on the, other, on the actual test you'll have that in your test booklet instead, is that we have an example of something that works from question 18, since question 18 simply asked which of the following works. You'll notice in this example, Center 3 recycled plastic. So it has to be the case that Center 3 can, in fact, recycle plastic. So we can get rid of any answer choice that doesn't have a Center 3 in it. Well, that's just choice A here. So now we're down to two answer choices, and we can look at what those answer choices have in common and how they're different. Now, in this situation, both answer choices have a 3 left. So that's not something we need to check because A, we already said that it worked. B, it's in all the answer choices that we have left. So all we really need to check is to see whether sensor 1 can in fact recycle plastic. Then, now there are a number of ways we can approach this. We can go down a path of saying, well, can I concoct a scenario where sensor 1 recycles plastic? and go from there. An alternative possibility, which might save you some time, is to skip the question and come back. And the reason for this is as you go along with further questions, you're going to get more examples of scenarios that work. And it's quite possible that you could use those scenarios to answer the question without having to do something specifically for the question here. Either of those strategies is equally valid, and you want to think about how you can save time because a lot of people have trouble with the time management aspect of this part of the test. Just for the sake of illustration here, I've concocted a scenario that shows that P can in fact be its sensor 1. And the thought process here was the following. If I place P at sensor 1, I know that P has to only be at sensor 1, so I can't put him here or here. I notice that I have a rule that plastic and glass cannot go together, so I can't put glass at sensor 1. I also can't put glass at sensor 2, because then I would have to put him at sensor 1 based on this rule. So the only place that I can put glass is at sensor 3. So these two basically have to be where they are. And then I just thought about, well, how can I place the rest of these in a way that satisfies the rule? Now we want to avoid that whenever possible because it's a little bit more of an open-ended task than we would like. Because if I place things here and it doesn't work, I can't really conclude that nothing works because I may have just chosen poorly and then I would have to back up and try another scenario. That's a slippery slope to go down because it's very, very easy to spend five minutes on one question once you start trying to concoct those hypothetical scenarios. So in the actual test itself, I would probably move on and come back. But here, it's pretty easy to come up with something that works, so we can, in fact, see that choice D is the correct answer. Note also that if you had an answer here, that was not completely in line with what you have in your diagram, you want to make sure to update your information and update your diagram here so that you can use what you learned on this question for future questions. 
For example, if you hadn't come up with the deduction up front that P could not be at sensor 2, you could still say, as soon as you knew that D was the right answer for question 19, you say, well, plastic can only be at sensor 1 or sensor 3, you would want to add in this X to your diagram before moving on. Question 3 in this game, or question 20 in the section overall, reads, if sensor 2 recycles three kinds of material, then which one of the following kinds of material must sensor 3 recycle? And then you have the answer choices as follows. Now, in order to do this question, because it's a question asking which one must sensor 3 recycle, hopefully we can get at the answer to this question via a chain of forward deduction, so we don't have to be trying each of these answer choices. So what we want to do is we want to give us, uh, ourselves something that we can write down so that we can visually play around and we don't have to keep things in our head. Because keeping things in our head is what's going to make this game seem more difficult than it needs to be. So in this case, I've just written down very simply headings for centers 1, 2, and 3. And the if part of this question said if center 2 recycles three kinds of material, so I just put three slots under center 2. And then we can ask ourselves, where do we go from there, and what else can we do? The first rule here says every time you see wood, you have to see newsprint. I don't know what to do with that yet. So I'll look to the next rule. So everything that is at center 2 has to be at center 1. So that says that if there are three kinds of material at center 2, there have to also be three kinds of material at sensor 1. And then we have this type of relationship here. Notice here that even though before we couldn't conclude that if a material is at sensor 1, it's also at sensor 2, now in this particular instance we can because each sensor recycles at most three kinds of material, so we can't have anything stuck in extra here at sensor 1 that's not at sensor 2. The next rule says that plastic can only occur once, because plastic is only recycled at one sensor. So well here, if we just said that sensors 1 and 2 have to be equivalent, then plastic can't be at either of them, because then they would have to be appearing twice, and that would break the rule. So we can, in fact, say that plastic has to be at center 3. Coming back to the question, the question just asks, which one of the following kinds of material must center 3 recycle? So we've just answered our question, and we can just look here and say that the answer has to be C, plastic. 